I have been long, long overdue for an update here, guys. And I apologize for that. Life, you know, sometimes gets in the way of hobbies, unfortunately. So here is the finished product as I just scare one of my turtles to death. All right. <clears throat> so we have the top. I installed LED lighting and then next to the LED lighting is LED moon strip lighting. This bulb over here is a UVB bulb. This is their kind of their favorite basking area. And then I redid this basking area to make it look more um, like rock, cave type stuff and a much bigger opening. Added some fake grass. Those little sticks are just pond sticks. Don't have much going around in the background. Um, mainly because I was thinking about putting something else in this part, a non-aquatic creature, and I didn't want him to be able to crawl out. <laughs> so. Not a whole lot of background on that one, as opposed to this one where I have a lot of background done on that. The tank, the turtles have rearranged the artificial flowers quite a bit. Still got the African side neck. the red eared slider then there's two juvenile red eared sliders there's one the other one is typically up here in this little cave then the bluegill's still in here And there are five bullhead catfish. Goldfish has grown quite a bit, you can probably tell that. There's the goldfish still. And there's five of these bullhead catfish. <clears throat> Sandbed filter is working perfectly. Haven't had any hiccups with that. Um, Still have had a huge hiccup with this uh, K1 media filter. Um, it was in the design. I never used that K1 media before, so I didn't know how it was going to react. And I think I talked about this previously, but the, the design of this wall is flawed, um, which all I got to do is tear out that wall and I can fix it. However, even though it doesn't sound like a big deal, it means I got to drain this, move all that sand, move all those plants. And that is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, the K1 filtration here wasn't actually needed. It just, to me, looks badass. So that's why I had it in there. So I've been stalling on that. I will do it, just been super stalling. There, I think, is the only surviving crayfish out of what were, I think, like eight crayfish that started out. There is a pleco in here somewhere, but as you can see from my first video, this place is an absolute jungle. It has really, really grown. It is just an underwater Amazon growing beautifully. Now you can see how clear the water is. I have not done a single bit of maintenance on this tank. The only remotely close thing to maintenance I've done since this has been up and running is when the water evaporates and starts to get low, I'll hook a hose up to the sink here and pump water back into it. That is literally it. I've not cleaned any of the sides. I have not scrubbed anything. 
I have done zero maintenance on this tank. It is a functioning ecosystem. No water changes, no nothing. And as you can see, the water is beautiful. And this is a turtle tank, and we all know that turtles are uh, probably the worst aquarium pet for having dirty tanks. The water is crystal clear. Again, not a single water change. No maintenance. None whatsoever. All I have to do is feed them. That is it. So there she is. That is the uh, finished product minus that one retaining wall screwing up the, flo the flow of the uh, K1 media. And um, just to describe real quick what it's screwing up, <clears throat> or what the screw up is, if I haven't done that yet, the screw up is, is the hole for the waterfall is down at the bottom. And as you can see, the effect that that has on the K1 media is it has completely sucked it all down to the hole. I did not realize this stuff was going to be that light, so I didn't anticipate that. Um, there is rock covering the hole, and it's still it's sucking against the rock. So that's the flaw. The fix to the flaw is you take the hole and you put it up top to where the water comes. You can see the water's like really backed up. Normally the water level's right here. It's all the way up to the top. Um, so the water would flow down here, push the K1 down, and then instead of staying down, the water would flow back up trying to get out so it would continue the cycle. That's all that needs to be done is the hole needs to be removed from the bottom to the top. Of course, I did this retaining wall in glass, so I can't just cut the hole and plug the other one. Um, ironically enough, the two pieces of glass that I have for retaining walls are this, and then the waterfall, which is irrelevant, it's not a retaining wall, so excuse me. But yeah, this is the only retaining wall that I have this glass, and ironically, that's the one I need to manipulate. So I also want to look for an actual acrylic a uh, person that can do CNC cutting on acrylic so I can get a really precise, clean looking instead of just using, you know, my own uh, dermal and or dremel or whatever and cutting it and having it look kind of like a hack job. I'd, I'd like to have a professional looking one done. So trying to, trying to find that and haven't found that yet either. That's been incredibly difficult. Anything near me anyway. I got a $19 surge protector that has a timer on it. Um, these three things are just the light sources. You have upper tank, lower tank, and then upper tank uh, UVB bulb. So that's the daytime. And then that little timer right there is the for the blue LEDs under there. And then right there for the moon lighting so those two timers just flip flop each other and one goes off and the other goes on that timer up there is like a two dollar home three dollar home depot special but it works i mean it does all it needs to do turns the light on at one time and off at another can't complain so here's my update guys Sorry it's taken so long. Um, I'll get some uh, video of it at night. And hey, if any of you guys watching this know of people that do like laser CNC or something like that for acrylic, I have some dimensions that I want to get out there and get some acrylic cut. So uh, that'd be cool. Throw it in the comments.
love how the money wart grew over top that waterfall. It just wants attention. Oh, I forgot to mention I do also have a small moonlit strip right there so it gets underneath this big cave-esque thing that this top shelf is uh, whoa top shelf is uh, creating under here so there's still light <clears throat> okay so he is being a little attention seeker so we're gonna go ahead and feed him There he goes. Well, there's my update, guys. Again, sorry it's taken so long. But uh, even without the K1 Media, I mean, the K1 Media was overkill. It's just really sweet looking. <laughs> and, you know, there's no killing like overkilling in my book, so that's why I wanted it there. But everything's working fantastically. Again, you guys, as you guys can see, the water is crystal clear. I've done no maintenance whatsoever none zero zip zilch there's no algae anywhere up here the algae is growing on the top of the areas only the areas that get the most sunlight and water and that is it everything else it is completely clean. I've never, I've never scrubbed this. Not once. Not once. I do have a magnetic cleaner down there, but that's for the water line, as the water, because this tank isn't heated, so the water does take quite a while to evaporate. Oh, there's the pleco. The water does take quite a while to evaporate, so it can get a really crazy like you can see I think maybe maybe not it can get really crazy water lines in there so I'll dip that in the water and scrub them plus it gets like can I get that on will that capture on film I don't think it is actually well dead plant debris will stick to the um, side of the tank as the tanks lowering so I will also use that cleaner to scrub out the dead plant debris that sticks to the tank as the water line drops but um and psh, i do that i think i've only done it like twice <laughs> since i've put this tank together because it's not that big a deal so this is my fully functional five turtle tank strong with one crayfish one pleco five catfish one goldfish and one bluegill 
maintenance free tank. I'm pretty pleased with myself actually. Everything done myself. The acrylic wall, retaining wall down there for the K1 is the only thing that I don't want to do myself. I want somebody else to do it. Only because I don't have a CNC machine, otherwise I would do it. All right, guys. Well, this has been basically a 17-minute update on everything that's going on here. Um, any questions, comments, if you please feel free to uh, post them up, and I'll get back with you. And if anybody knows about that acrylic stuff, please let me know. That is something I am digging for. I live in Michigan, I'm in a suburb of Detroit, so I, it's, I'm trying to find something. I should say suburb of Flint, but um, we've had a couple power outages uh, during some storms here, which has not stalled the sand filter at all. Um, the water kicks back up, sand filter kicks right back in going, there's no clogging or jamming, um, it's working like a charm, I'm very pleased with it hasn't lost any any more sand than it did after the initial push so it's I haven't had to again no maintenance none on this the only thing that sucks is when there's a power outage I have to reset the surge protector timer which I mean if that's the only thing I can complain about I'm doing pretty good you know what I'm saying so alright guys Take care, and until next time.